Glory to Jesus Christ. I wonder which of those virtues that we hear in the Beatitudes made the fathers of the church select that reading for St. Nicholas. But nevertheless, he seemed to fulfill many, if not all, of those lists of Beatitudes, those lists of blessednesses. Um, Somebody once said that the Christian life is blessed, 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 rejoice. And that's what we hear tonight. Or as another Bible translation puts it, happy, 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 rejoice. Well, one of St. Nicholas's great virtues was his charity. And I think if he was happy, 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 it was probably because he gave so much. Not only gave gifts, but gave his life to serve his flock. And the fathers of the church, in the prayers of the church, seem to pay particular attention to the fact that Nicholas saved innocent people from a wrongful death. But nevertheless, given all of his virtues, the church prays this. The fruit of your good works, O Holy Father, has brought joy to the hearts of the faithful, who indeed has not heard of your wonderful works and not admired your patience and humility, the joy with which you fill the poor and the compassion that you show to the afflicted. You have truly been an admirable example for all. And now that your unfading crown has been placed on you, O Holy Nicholas, pray for our souls. So I want to read um, a version of Nicholas's life just to remind us about this life filled with blessedness. More than 1,600 years ago, in the year 270 AD, St. Nicholas was born not far from Myra in what is now modern-day Turkey. At that time, Christians were persecuted for their faith. Many of them were tortured and executed because of their belief in Jesus Christ. Nicholas was taught by his parents to love the Lord with his whole mind, heart, soul, and with all his strength. When they died, he inherited their money. He used this to help the poor, the hungry, and the sick. Whenever he helped anyone, he did secretly, so that only God would know. He did not want praise from people. He wanted his reward to be only in heaven. One old man was so poor that he decided to send his three beautiful daughters out into the streets to make a living. And hearing about this, St. Nicholas came secretly at night and threw some gold coins tied in a stocking through the window. In the morning, they found the money and gave thanks to God for saving them from such misfortune. After he gave away his money that his parents had left him, Nicholas decided to become a monk. He went to a monastery where he lived and worked and prayed, intending to spend the rest of his life repenting of his sins. But soon it became clear that God wanted him to be a priest, and so he began to study the word of God. St. Nicholas became the parish priest of a village church after his ordination. He worked very hard, instructing his flock and helping those in need. He performed all the divine services and was a spiritual father to all. It was then that the Archbishop of Myra died. The other bishops, as well as the priests and people of the town, gathered to choose a successor. They couldn't decide who should be their new Archbishop. They kept a vigil and prayed all night long in the cathedral, begging God to guide them. God revealed to one of the bishops that the first priest to enter the church in the morning should be chosen as the new archbishop. At sunrise, a simple priest, Father Nicholas, came quietly into the cathedral to say his morning prayers. And in this way, the Lord revealed his own choice for archbishop. In the year 325, a great council of the church was held in the city of Nicaea. 
317 bishops came from all over the world. At this council, part of the creed that we sing in every liturgy was written down, and St. Nicholas had a wonderful opportunity to defend the teachings of the church against the heretic Arius, who denied that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh, and who was leading many people away, leading many people astray from the faith by his false teaching. Upon hearing the blasphemies that Arius brazenly uttered against the Son of God, St. Nicholas punched him in the face. And since the canons of the church forbid priests from punching anybody, his fellow bishops were perplexed about what action should be taken. In the night, our Lord Jesus Christ and the Blessed Mother of God appeared to certain bishops, informing them that no action was to be taken against Nicholas at all, since he had not acted out of passion, but out of zeal and love and piety. St. Nicholas followed the words of our Lord, lay up treasure for yourself in heaven. He said his prayers every day. He fasted and performed many good deeds, and God was so pleased that he worked many miracles through him. Because he was able to calm storms on the sea, he became known as the patron saint of sailors. Because he protected children and even raised three of them from the dead, he was known as a patron of young people. He was able to multiply food, just as our Saviour did with the fish and the loaves. And in this way, he once kept a whole city from starving. People began to call him a wonder worker, a person who works wonders or performs miracles. They were so inspired by his life of service that many of them, too, began to lead holy lives filled with good deeds. After a long life, God called his servant home to heaven on December the 6th in the year 343. He was buried in his own cathedral, but in the year 1087, the remains of his holy body were taken to Italy to save them from the invading Turks. There they remain to this day in the city of Bari. And as a sign of God's grace, a fragrant substance called myrrh comes from the relics of St. Nicholas. And I read today that when his bones were last examined in the 1950s, they still produce this holy and miraculous myrrh. May St. Nicholas pray for us that we can live the Beatitudes of the Gospel. And since today we think about gift giving, and since we give gifts in his honour, I've been praying about the gift of charity, the gift of gift giving. And I'm reminded that our Lord was quite plain. He said, if you give, it will be given to you. A full measure pressed down, shaken together, and flowing over will be poured into your lap. If you want to be blessed, do some extra giving this year. For in the measure with which you use for others, it will be measured to you. And I remembered also that in Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, he has a lot to say about gift giving. And I think this is helpful for us at this time of year. He says, he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. May he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness while you are enriched in everything for all generosity, which causes thanksgiving to God. There are some wise words, some inspired words, Norwest, on how to give gifts. Use the measure that you would want used for you. Don't give sparingly, give bountifully. 
And give as you purpose in your heart, says St. Paul. What gift does your heart want to give? Give from the heart. If it's a book from the heart, give the book from the heart rather than the 200 books that you are just not happy about. Give a gift from the heart. Because God loves a cheerful giver. Who doesn't? And I'm sure St. Nicholas was a very cheerful giver. And God is able to make All grace abound towards you so that you may have an abundance for every good work. What do you have in abundance? I bet all of us have an abundance of one kind or another. Do you have an extra doll? If you have an extra doll, maybe there's a kid who doesn't have a doll. And whatever whatever it is that you have an abundance of. You know, in our neighborhood, there's this... um, I don't know what, it call, what it's called, but it's a giveaway group on Facebook. And anybody who lives in our, uh, in our estate can sign up for this Facebook page. And the only rule is that you mustn't pay for anything or swap anything. It's all giveaway. And people give away all kinds of stuff because they have a couch or a trailer or some wood or whatever it is that is abundant to them. It's surplus to their needs and they give it away. That's a, great, that's a wonderful thing to do. I, I wish there was more. More people did that. But what abundance do you have that you've not shared yet? Maybe in its abundance of talent. Maybe in its abundance of time. Maybe it is an abundance of treasure. Well, God bless you. Be a cheerful giver and bless somebody with whatever your abundance is. Again, he says, You are enriched in everything for all generosity to cause thanksgiving to God. So let us take a leaf out of the life of St. Nicholas and let us live lives of blessedness and generosity because all good giving comes from our good God. So let's imitate Nicholas and ultimately imitate the Father of Lights who loves to give good gifts to his children. And let us, in honour of St. Nicholas, be cheerful givers. Glory to Jesus Christ.